Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit of CynicalBrett.com and YouTube.com slash Total Halibut. And I am here with the CEO of Wargaming.net, Victor. Welcome to the show. We're going to be talking a little bit about World of Tanks and, of course, World of Warplanes. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about the history of Wargaming.net, since it has been around for quite some time. Some people will be aware of the name and the various games that you've done before venturing into the MMO market. Well, the company, we can say that the company is 12 years old now, and we have been making strategy games only for all that time. We started with DBA Online, which would be a computerization of very famous in narrow circles uh, tabletop game called, you know, Debellis Antiquidades, and yep. then we made Massive Assault, and we made Oral War, a lot of add-ons, blah, blah, blah. Three years ago, we decided to make an MMO and stop doing retail boxes. Right, so that was an interesting change, and one of the companies that have, thankfully, I think for a lot of people now, jumped purely on the digital distribution bandwagon. Uh, we do see your games, of course, on Steam and Gamers Gate, and now you've ventured into the MMO scene, and I'd like to know, what exactly gave you the idea for World of Tanks, since particularly like Wargaming.net, initially, specifically with Massive Assault, things like that, you were very much into turn-based games. Uh... Yeah, turn-based are cool. Uh, I sometimes keep playing uh, Massive Assault, and my father keeps playing Massive Assault. I but still own it. that does not sell anymore when you put a digital product in a physical box throughout the supply chain, onto the shelf, and then it's dead, right? MMO, well, num num number one, it's freely distributed through downloads, Steam, if you would, or any other you know, download gates. So it gives you freedom. You, you don't have to deal with the physical distribution chain. Uh, when it comes to World of Tanks, three and a half years ago when we were thinking about this, there were already a lot of MMOs, most like 98% fantasy. Yep. We could have made another fantasy, and actually we started making uh, a fantasy MMO as the engine test, but then okay. you know, like even a kid would realize that going against World of Warcraft and those zillions of Chinese and Korean and Taiwanese MMOs, that would be a suicide. Okay. And we thought to ourselves, okay, what, what, what can we make? What, what are we able to make like good? Well, tanks? Yeah, we, we've been a making tank games like for, for the last 10 years. Yeah, there's quite a few tanks in the yeah, game. Just let, let, let's make MMO about tanks. Why not? No, no. <laughs> to, to me, that seems like kind of a bit of a boyhood dream, isn't it? You know, I want to make a game. What's in it? Tanks. What else? More tanks. Let's have a lot of people in tanks. And I think a lot of people very much appreciate that. Thank God you didn't make a fantasy game because you've moved into a space that was very much unoccupied when it comes to MMOs. I mean, we've had a few MMOs that dealt with the action side, things, planet side, of course, World War II online, but nothing is focused purely on actual tanks and in terms of driving a tank that's properly modeled with proper physics and firing arcs and things like that. So from the world of gaming, thank you to start with for doing that. That's very much appreciated. And now you are starting to move into a whole new territory, as I see on the walls around us. There are two titles, and the first one that you are coming out with goes by the name of World of Warplanes. So tell us yes. a little bit about that one. Uh, it all started naturally from already big World of Tanks community. Whenever I log in on a Russian server to play the game and under my own name or whenever I go to a forum, just 30% uh, of the discussion is when are you going to make warplanes, uh, fighters, battleships, and of course big walking robots. Everybody wants that. World of mechs. <laughs> mm. No, we don't owe mech word. Shame. Okay. <laughs> World of robots it is then. <laughs> uh, yeah, big ro walking robots. World but of big walking robots. But anyway, this is the same category. We have to keep in mind that right now we have 5 million players in World of uh, Tanks yep, worldwide. Yep, yep. And I don't believe there were so many diehard tank enthusiasts. What happened is players of air simulations like Isle 2, Sturmavik, players of uh, Navy Field, it's a na na yep, naval MMO yep, game. Familiar with it. Uh, uh, players of EVE Online, they, they started playing World of Tanks, not because they were particularly tanks. Yeah, tank tanks are nice, but mostly because there was... Um, a very nicely uh, put together game with short sessions, photorealistic graphics, smooth connection to the server, yep. uh, team tactics, fast. This is a, a Tamagotchi and leveling up aspect to that. Yep. It's free to play with very smooth and easy monetization kind of push. So they, they like the whole concept, I guess, those five million people in the first place. So it made us think that, that Warplanes and battleships. Of course, they, they will attract battleship and warplane diehard enthusiasts, yep. no uh -huh. doubt about that. 
but also they will find, let's say, warplanes are obviously faster than tanks. Yep. You just you can shoot only where you move to. Uh -huh. It's adrenaline. It's 3D maneuvering. It's all that dogfights and helping each other in, in the skies and being like fast. Battleships, okay, they're slow. They have big guns. Very so big out guns. of world of tanks, I think many players will go to from time to time to warplanes to just have blast experience. And while drinking beer at night, probably battleships will, will make their night. That's an interesting way to look at it. And it also brings up the point that you expect your player base to be hopping between your games. Actually, yes. We don't like the word hopping. We are going to make one unifying account. So your log right. in and password will work for warplanes and battleships as well. Okay. Of course, everybody combines gold on, on the portals, those publishers. So gold and silver coins will be combined uh, for, for all three games. Okay. But the, the beautiful trick is that we will also allow to use free experience from World of Tanks to be used in World of Warplanes. So yeah. if, you, if you're good at tanks, if you have a level 9 or 10 tanks already, even before World of Warplanes comes out, you can start, let's say, saving experience in World of Tanks, ah, so not it. spending it on okay. tanks. And when the Warplane game is released, you just boom there and head go. in, message me, BF 109 slash something something right away. Yeah. And the other way around too. Okay, so it isn't really about hopping, it's about choosing what you feel like playing at the time. Like, do I feel like flying a plane today? Do I feel like driving a tank or indeed a boat? Yeah, for, for World of Tanks players, that might feel a little bit like add-on or just big expansion. So yeah. th that's okay with us. Okay. But of course, our PR guys, our you know, marketing and advertising and promotion, we will definitely focus on those die-hard warplane guys yep. and die-hard battleship guys in the first place. Yeah, uh, when we got a chance to see World of Warplanes, it looked similar to World of Tanks in the way that it seems like you've got a lot of accurate simulation there, but it's very easy to access. It's so it's something like, it's, it's a little arcadey, uh, but as I say, you do have that information, the very accurate modeling and things like that. And I suppose part of the design process, where do you draw the line between realism and accessibility? That's a good question. Ironically, we were getting those questions two and three years ago when we first started talking about World yeah. of Tanks. The yeah. same questions, arcade-ish or hardcore, uh -huh. you know, management of your tank controls. Yeah. The world has, has gave us an answer. We did a good job uh, of finding that sweet middle point yep. uh, between arcade-ish and uh, realism. Right now, I can assure you and your readers uh, that the best of the best of our people, game designers, uh, testers, the guys behind World of Tanks success are right now experimenting, trying, tweaking, changing, experimenting again with the same set of problems for World of Warplanes. I believe it's going to be like this. We're not going to have a cockpit controls, like you will not be pressing buttons too hardcore, yep. and there are other games concentrated on that. Yep. Too arcade-ish. Actually, we will repel the hardcore World War II historian warplane audience. Of course, they'll stick to IL-2. Yeah. And uh, uh, somewhere in the middle, we will make it accessible to the point that a newcomer, that's our actually target audience, who never played uh, airplane games, will be able, using WSD and um, a mouse, pretty much like in World of Tanks, kind of fly and, and shoot it at uh, NPCs and real people. Th there's going to be a sandbox in the skies where everybody would be new, but they will be flying, not crashing, shooting, well, not crashing. Yeah. When you reach, uh, let's suppose, level four or five, then we would probably expect from you have certain knowledge already. Uh -huh. you've, you've seen dozens of battle, yeah. uh, uh, battles, so then the uh, control scheme can be modified a little bit, or you will switch from mouse to joystick. Mm -hmm. You'll just go and buy the, the joystick, right? We, you, we cannot let you download the joystick. I'm afraid not, <laughs> folks. You're going to have to buy a peripheral. Uh, yeah, or use a complicated, uh, more complicated keyboard yep. uh, setup to actually control the airplane to small detail. The aerodynamics and the flight model we have in the game is sophisticated and realistic. It's okay. just the the default controls will allow you not to fall down and make simple maneuvers without dying and just getting your simple objectives done. Yeah. As you progress, you would sacrifice uh, usability a little bit, just getting a little bit more more keys actually on the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. 
but you will be able to have a free hand experience in this 3D uh, space and do all those evasive maneuvers yeah, and figures. Yeah, more precise control, which allows yeah. you to compete with the hardcore and indeed with the more experienced players. So and it's actually, an experience that grows with you. And actually, we have the model replicating those hardcore simulations. That would be our goal. And replicating the, the actual World War II air combat, which you would which you would get in, in magazines and films in Discovery Channel, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, chronicles in, 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 in many, you know, like ways. Absolutely fantastic. Sounds good to me. So this is going to uh, launch with several factions and you plan on adding a few more, if I recall correctly. Yeah, we will start with, of course, Russians, of course, Americans, yep. of course, Germans. The next would be obviously British. A Japanese, where would you go without Japanese of Air Force? Yep. And then we will think about, let's say, smaller air nations such as, you know, Poland, Hungary, Sweden, Switzerland. Unlike tanks, many small, many small nations did have very decent and cool airplanes during World War II and around that period. Yeah, so you want to try and eventually add those and let people experience the planes that perhaps they've seen and they really like the look of, but they're not all that familiar with, something a little bit more unusual. So beyond your usual Messerschmitt and Spitfire. Uh, well, when, when it comes to US, Soviet Union and England, they, they, they had a chance to continue <laughs> airplane production till the 60s, yeah. right, uh, with the first jet planes. That's where we end those, line, uh, those uh, branches. Germans were not that lucky. Uh, so we will, as in World of Tanks, be using here and there those secret weapons, those prototypes, yeah. those blueprints. Of course, not, not, not doing it over the limit, over yeah. the edge. Yeah. So you, you will have access to some German Wunderwaffe. Ah, excellent. Things like the Comet as well, I believe. The, that was the British jet fighter, if I recall correctly, very, very early. Things like that. We have this big pile of books with zillions of <laughs> photos, and you just go and buy Osprey books. That's enough work for us for five years. No kidding. Yeah, it sounds like you do have an awful lot going for you right there. Now, just moving away from that for a second, I do want to talk about your business model just a little bit. Uh, you are, of course, one of the increasing number of companies that is going fully digital and is using microtransactions. So when you first started out with the idea of we're going to create a game that actually use it, used microtransactions, uh, what ideas did you have in your head and how has your business model changed as you've gone on through now to World of Warplanes and eventually World of Battleships? Well, I have to be honest, uh, three or four years ago, there was we were playing, myself and my colleagues, we were playing the game called Navy Field. Familiar, Basically, yeah. this is kind of the, pre uh, this is something which World of Battleships will be inspired of course, uh, yeah. after. But the same for World of Tanks. World of Tanks was inspired by Navy Field, but Navy Field was too old, 2D game, which rarely got any updates and was slow and kind of strange with, let's say, oriental mentality behind it. Yeah, yeah. For World of Tanks, we inherited the main principle. Free to play, uh, technological trees you have to go along, different branches representing different battleship, um, warship types yeah. uh, and tank types, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. But we made it a more of a uh, like human face for the West, right? So we we made leveling up easier and faster. We removed dependence on gold that much. We removed some some strange random factors in that game. So we, we yeah. made it like Russian style, and then tweaked it to be West Europe and American style. Right. There you, know, you go. We, uh, and we also added like triple A visuals and quality models and all that 3D smoothly running. That, that's important for the West too. Yeah, absolutely. An insight into the mind of Wargaming.net when it comes to its business strategy in that regard. And you said a few things about what could potentially come in the future. I think the question that everyone always asks is, is there ever the idea in your head that you eventually want to try and unify these kinds of vehicles into a combined arms game? And uh, not really, okay, not, not any time soon. Uh, yeah. Well, first, there are very good games like uh, Call of Duty, Metal Warner, more or less doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, number two, why would you repair a, a car <laughs> which does not break? World of Tanks, three days ago, in Russia alone, we had 180,000 peak CCU, just like almost 200,000 people were playing in Russia at the same time. That's extremely impressive. That, that, that's a lot of people playing at the same time. Yeah. So we would rather concentrate on cool tank combat, cool air combat, and cool battleship combat. 
what we are going to do is the combination on the level of unified account, gold, credits, and experience, I mentioned that, and clan war map. Yeah. Right now in World of Tanks we have uh, a lot of clans fighting uh, on the global map. What we're gonna do is, before a tank battle occur, as squadrons from these clans or from friendly clans fight an air battle in World of Warplanes, if my, if my clan wins the air battle, the tank battle, which will follow in five minutes, my team will have, let's say, extra airstrike ah. or recon uh, aircraft, you know, uh, circling for 20 seconds uh, under any, uh, any square of the map. Uh, battleships naturally will guard channels, seas, and oceans. So yep. to, uh, to keep the, the supply chain and to transfer your troops, mm -hmm. you'll have to control the seas. Right. So in terms of the unification, it comes in the form of the metagame and the clan warfare, as opposed to directly flying your plane at a tank. So that's what you're aiming for for the moment. Exactly, yes. Brilliant. That actually sounds incredibly fun, honestly. I, I cannot think of what I would enjoy more. So just to wrap this up then, what kind of, do you have any kind of estimated release date for World of Warplanes as of yet? Are you planning a beta for it? Well, I'm, I'm, happy, to, I'm happy to be in a position right now to, to use the Blizzard style yes. phrase when it's ready. When it's ready. Of course, we're not going to be dragging that too long. Yep. Good news for us is that all that technology we have been working on for three and a half years is right now available for Warplanes and Battleships naturally. Yep. It's very scalable, it's very robust and modular. So it's easy for us. Uh, we put together the first flying version of Warplanes in four months. So this is impressive. And it took us maybe one year for World of Tanks. Um, in, during this year, before the end of this year, we hope to have some sort of public beta testing, obviously closed, then in, in Q1 probably, but I cannot guarantee the exact date, there will be open beta. And if we are lucky and if the stars come together, we may uh, release and ship the product uh, by the end of the next year. That's our plan. There you go, folks. Victor, the tank general, as we like to call him right now, CEO of the one and only Wargaming.net. Keep an eye out for World of Warplanes, folks. And remember that World of Tanks is available free to play right now. So go and check it out if you're looking for something just a little bit different from Swords and Sorcery. My name has been Total Biscuit for CynicalBread.com and YouTube.com slash Total Victor, thank you very much for talking thank to us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will see you next time.